I'm interested in studying the mammalian olfactory system. The olfactory system has a sort of a direct link to some of the interesting higher uh, functions of the brain, such as uh, memory, cognition, and emotion. And so what we were interested in is to understand how does the brain encode sensory information into patterns of activity. For example, uh, when you are following a nice food smell to its source, um, what do you do? It's something that's effortless, um, but it's actually a fairly remarkable computation. That is, you are detecting little wafts of odor. They are intermittent, their concentrations go up and down, they're mixed with all sorts of background, and yet you are able to track this to the source. And so when we analyzed this, we had a rat chasing after a chocolate trail drawn on a piece of paper on a treadmill. And the rat was able to do this very well. And what we found was that the rat was not simply uh, following the odor. It was predicting which way the trail would go. And so you see that we're already in the domain going from just responding to input to actually thinking about the natural world, thinking about what is going to happen. And this prediction was turned out to be an interesting uh, computational function at a higher level than, than sort of the logic gates that neurons uh, execute. The question of how rats predict or how, how rats and mice perform various functions of encoding information actually is absolutely relevant to how humans do the same thing. Um, to a very large extent, what we do is built on precisely the same kinds of building blocks, the same kinds of cells, and um, in degree at least, built on the same kinds of cognitive functions that rats and mice are perfectly capable of doing, memory and reasoning and prediction. So how does it matter to us? It matters in, in many ways. Um, first of all, there's the question of, uh, you know, how do we think? It's, it's one of the defining questions, I think, of uh, what people would like to know about themselves. This is how we learn how, how the elementary operations of, of thinking brain computation are done. The other very practical implication is uh, health and disease. That is, we are uh, subject to essentially the same kinds of molecules and genetic uh, signals that are present in rats and mice. The more we understand about these signals, the more we understand about what goes wrong there um, and how uh, the mechanisms of these interactions uh, unfold, the better we understand how that happens in us. And then finally, there is a very interesting convergence between uh, what uh, kinds of computations we understand of the brain and what we are beginning to design into our own creations in machines. And uh, I think a lot of lessons are to be learned from how uh, animals, including us and rats and mice, do it. I spent many years looking at brain computation through the lens of senses in, the, in rats and mice in olfaction, uh, but now I've moved on to looking at sequences of activity, uh, how the brain processes it from the cellular to the network level. The computations in the brain are commonly thought of in terms of how networks function, and that of course is a very important level. But I've been very interested in uh, the network within the cell, that is, when you get down to looking at the genes, the proteins that are made by the genes, and how these interact with each other, it turns out that within every cell, in fact, within every small subdivision of every cell in their brain, there's an immense amount of computation taking place. For example, um, when you remember things, there are events that take place, molecular events that take place at an extremely tiny, a submicron scale structure called the synapse, which is a junction between cells. And these events can form a little feedback loop, a little cycle of activity, and this can switch state from a low state to a high state. And these kinds of switches, they're called bistable switches, are very similar to the kinds of switches that you have in computers to store information. So here you have a 
mechanism for storing information mediated by molecular events. And we're really interested in looking at this interplay between the signals that take place through molecular interactions, electrical interactions, cellular, and network. And really, the way I look at it is that the brain functions precisely because you have interactions taking place all the way from genes and molecules on up to networks. It's this interplay that is really uh, fundamental to how the brain works. So there are many disciplines that inspire my work. One is uh, physics, which is where I did my basic training, undergraduate and, and, and so on. And that is very fundamental because it, it really is the way in which one thinks of things uh, as emerging phenomena emerging from underlying simple mechanisms. And then one also has a, a, a format uh, for learning how to abstract things. So the physics is very important. Another one is computer sciences, um, which I'm not formally trained in, but it is very fundamental to how I do my work. I do a lot of computer modeling, and also uh, the whole revolution in understanding how networks, now artificial networks, uh, have remarkable uh, computational properties is a very interesting uh, advance, I think, in understanding how the brain also may do such things. And finally, uh, another really important inspiration is actually the social sciences, thinking about how society functions, because there too you have multi-scale systems. You have individuals, you and I, interacting with each other according to rules which make complete sense at our level. And when you put these, these individuals together in higher and higher levels of organization, you end up with societies which do very interesting and different things. And I think there's a very interesting parallel there between how cells combine with their own individual level interactions to give you emergent properties of how the brain works to how people interact to give you how society works. I think artificial intelligence is actually fascinating. It is at a stage now where we have built machines that can perform tasks, cognitive tasks if you like, and yet we don't understand how the machines are doing it. And this is amazing because for as long as people have thought about thinking, the brain has been a system which does tasks and we don't know how it does it. So now we have another system and the weird thing is that this is a system we have built, these machines we have built, and yet we don't really understand how they do what they do. So this is an amazing opportunity to try to understand the, really, the real basis for how cognition, understanding, intelligence, if you like, emerge. So I think that it's a, it's a marvelous confluence of, of engineering and science and exploring things at the boundaries. I think it's wonderful. Well, it's an incredible honor. I think of it as a recognition of the environment, of the people around, of the institutions around us that have made good science possible in India, where you know, one would be able to bring in and broaden the, the lessons that science has for a rational, thoughtful way of advancing human welfare.